Hi, this is Sandeep Jali and Manus Brilakis presenting case 262 for the Manual of CTO Interventions. This is a case illustrating use of the side base technique as well as the star technique for recanalizing a right coronary CTO. The patient had previous coronary bypass and medically refractory angina despite multiple angina medications. He did have inferior ischemia on a stress test and a CTO of the right coronary artery. On coronary angiography, there is heavy calcification of the right coronary artery with the proximal right coronary CTO. A patent saphenous vein graft supplying the PDA, however, there was a sizable right posterior lateral branch that was filling through epicardiac collaterals from the left. So the target was to open the right posterior lateral branch. Now, this is a very challenging CTO. We have a blunt proximal cap, we have a long occlusion length with heavy calcification, and the right posterior lateral was filling through epicardial collaterals. Our plan was to first try retrograde through the vein graft to the PDA, then try undergrade with undergrade dissection or reentry given the long occlusion length. So we first went down the saphenous vein graft, but then, despite using an angulated venture microcatheter, we were unable to wire retrogradely. We then switched undergrade. The plan was uh, to knuckle, given the extensive calcification, but we did have a lot of difficulty advancing equipment down the right coronary artery. We did use uh, a small balloon to uh, create more entry into the vessel, but then we had a lot of difficulty advancing guide wires. We eventually used uh, the base technique with a 3.0 millimeter balloon and a filter XT guide wire in order to gain access to the extra plug space. Because we were into the intra plug space and with the heavy calcium, it was very hard to advance equipment. The filter XT did uh, progress. However, unfortunately, it kept on entering into an atrial branch. So what to do next, uh, we decided to do the side base, which means we advanced the balloon into this uh, atrial branch and then used another wire, a pilot 200 that creates large knuckles. And by doing that, we were able to advance the knuckle across the origin of the atrial branch going towards the distal right coronary artery. Then we continued to dissect distally, but then we got into a similar problem the wire kept on entering into a side branch. So to avoid this, we did again side base. We advanced a balloon, and then a Pilot 200 guide wire was used to track again into the right posterior lateral. So here we are, again, we have a balloon, and then we're trying to advance the Pilot wire into the posterior lateral, which eventually was successful. We switched it uh, with a Mongo wire, and then we ended up uh, uh, doing the star technique, uh, advancing distally to restore some undergrade flow. And this is uh, how the vessel looked after the balloon dilatation. We do have extensive dissections throughout the vessel, but there was good flow distally, and uh, we decided to not place a stand given the long occlusion length and the extensive dissection. So the patient was discharge from the cath lab, he went to the cardiology floor, but then he developed chest discomfort with uh, ST segment depressions in V2 and V3, suggestive of posterior myocardial infarction, so he came emergently back to the cardiac cath lab. And this is what we saw. The vessel remained open, but then there was a stain into this small branch of the right posterior lateral. So the concern was for a small effusion, and uh, the concern was for a perforation, and sure enough, there was a small effusion on the echocardiogram. So we have a distal vessel perforation in the small branch of the right posterior lateral, how to take care of it. Um, one thought was to advance a cover stand across the origin of this posterior lateral. And uh, we tried to do that, however, there was so much calcium and tortuosity that uh, the stent, the PK papyrus stent, actually was lost, came off the balloon into the distal right coronary artery and could not reach further down. So after this happened, we deployed it with uh, a 2.0 and 3.0 millimeter balloon, and we decided to proceed with coiling. 
So we advanced a prograde, which is a 2.8 French microcatheter inside that lower branch. And then we used uh, a coil, a penumbra coil, it was a ruby coil, into the um, posterior lateral and then overlapped it with a packing coil. And that uh, stopped flow into this branch while we still had flow going into the right posterior lateral. Several lessons from this case. The first one is the importance of undergrade dissection when we're dealing with long CTOs and heavily calcified vessels. The side base technique was very useful for going around the origin of side branches. This atrial branch was a problem and this branch was a problem as well. We did not see any perforation at the end of the procedure. However, the filling was suboptimal and maybe that is why. When we had this distal vessel perforation, our initial thought was to put a cover stand across the origin of the vessel, but cover stands may have a hard time being delivered, even with guide extensions, and indeed it was lost. When such, a th such an event happens, it's best to just deploy it versus trying to retrieve it from the body. And finally, what we ended up doing for sealing the perforation is uh, using coils that uh, successfully closed this perforated branch. Thank you.